when you're a leader, I think that you need to be willing to step forward and to take a stand on issues. If you feel strongly about those issues, you need to be able to, to reach out to others and try to, to um, bring people together and try to address problems um, together. But you, you many times need to be the one who can be out front and, and define the issue. Defining issues and leadership are skills Minor Mickle Shaw learned early on in a family who played a major role in the development of Greenville and the region. My family has always been business oriented, so I grew up uh, at the dinner table. We would talk about business, and my dad was with Daniel Construction Company, and they were building the company, building Daniel, and, and in building Daniel, that's really like building the, the southeast and because of all the business that they would bring in and that sort of thing. So I think I learned about business just sitting around the dinner table with family conversations. Her father, Buck Mickle, had been chairman of Daniel International Corporation and later held leadership positions with the Floor Corporation, which acquired Daniel. But beyond business, the family also focused on service and education. I was lucky enough to have some wonderful mentors along the way, and the men, certainly my parents always had confidence in me, and they, they're the ones, they're the reason that my brother and I feel strongly about giving back to the community, because they did, and they, they made sure that we understood that when you live somewhere, you, you participate and you give back. And that foundation has led to her own trailblazing in both business and public service. As I grew older, we had a family business that we had different investments. And I was um, first started working at Citizens and Southern National Bank of South Carolina here in South Carolina. And later, I was asked to go on the board of, of what was called CNS Bank of South Carolina. So that really, um, that particular role really started my business career in uh, board career but I've been lucky enough to have some wonderful mentors along the way who had confidence in me, probably a lot more confidence than I had in myself. And they gave me opportunities, for instance, CNS Bank of South Carolina, Bob Royal, who uh, lives down in the lower part of the state, gave me that opportunity. And Roger Milliken gave me the opportunity to go on the airport commission and now serve as chairman for that. Her chairing of the Greenville Spartanburg Airport Commission caps almost two decades of efforts to transform and expand the airport and the region as a whole. We actually started working um, to try to recruit Southwest Airlines to the Greenville Spartanburg Airport back in 2001. And then we were very close at that point. And then of course we had 9-11 happen and Southwest Airlines, along with all the other airlines, had a lot of difficulties after that and had to regroup. And they changed their, their model of where they would go. And so we had to, we waited a long time and about 10 years after that, we had a lot going on in the Greenville and Spartanburg and upstate region. A lot of very exciting things were going on. And we decided to approach Southwest Airlines again, and we were lucky enough to be able to get an interview out at Southwest, and we brought them to town. And they were able, some of the people were the same team members that we had dealt with in 2001. And they were able to see the, diff see the, the growth of this area, see the job growth, see the opportunities. And the reason we were able to get solicit, get Southwest, is because we worked as a team, not just the airport, but we worked with all of the economic developers in the upstate. We worked with all the chambers, and it was the number one issue on everybody's list. We needed more air service and better air service and lower cost air service at Greenville Spartanburg Airport. And what's the result of that? What has happened since they've been here? Well, certainly it was exciting that they came in and I think people realized that for Greenville Spartanburg to be able to get Southwest, it really helped put us on the map in many ways. And in addition to that, the other airlines have increased their service. Uh, we recently got Frontier Airlines. They're, they've just started at Greenville Spartanburg and we have announced 
new flights to LaGuardia. We have one starting in December down to uh, Miami every day. And so we've, we've been able to grow significantly at GSP. Her determination to see business growth in the Greenville area and the state is only one part of the equation. Well, I think quality of life is critical. Um, you, you have to have, everybody needs a positive, strong quality of life in their community and also just in your life. Um, being able to see the, the arts and being able to see music and the arts and education and what that does for a community, but what that does for your life and what it does for your children's life. How do you go about determining which nonprofits to affiliate with? And you have had such an influence in so many organizations, arts, education, mm -hmm. uh, the Duke Endowment. Duke Endowment. Um, well, I think it just, you know, you're, as you grow and you're involved in, in various aspects, your, your life grows and your, your interests grow. And I started out in my volunteer work being more involved in the activities that really affected my family and my children. And certainly um, education was one, child care and was another, and I've always been interested in the social services. So I have been fortunate enough to be involved in nonprofits that deal with things like child care, with housing issues, transportation, and and also nonprofits that look at the big issues. I've been on the South Carolina Competitiveness Council and uh, Darla Moore's Palmetto Institute looking at the larger issues. I think my husband and I have always tried to make sure that when we're involved in community activities that we're trying to make the community better, not just for ourselves, but for the whole community. And that inclusiveness extends to her thoughts about succession. I think also leadership is uh, trying to make sure that other people have these opportunities to lead so that you are not going to be the sole leader. I think it's much better when you can develop a larger group of leaders around you and hopefully empower those people, hopefully younger people, to stand up and go forward and be the leaders for the next generation. And that's what I enjoy doing.